Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly you should be watching me in black and white right now. As you will have told from the thumbnail, the title and if you read any of it the description. Today's film I am trying out some individual shadows from a UK indie company called Butonomy. So, if you want to find out exactly which shades I've chosen, which shades I use, what this looks like in Glorious Technicolor, and whether I recommend them or not, my friend, you have the best seat in the house. As I've said, I thought some considerable time now oft here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels but they don't have Sammy the Sloth straw backing them up may not move fast but have you seen the length of those sloth claws? Oof! I wouldn't want to pick my nose with one don't pick your nose, it's disgusting oh, grab a drink grab a snack Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Um, it's actually later in the day than I normally film. It's half past two in the afternoon. Um, but the weather's been funny all day. I've been trying to wait for some decent light, and I'm like, if I don't film now, I'm going to lose all the daylight completely. So I've got my LED strip lights on behind the camera. Hopefully that will be enough so you can at least see the colours true to form. So we'll have shown you these in the intro. Just give you a bit of a close up on them. So these, this is a, an indie company that I discovered through Ari Lynette. Um, who I watch, he did um, a film using some of their singles and I thought, oh, new indie company to try, selling singles, fantastic, because there's times when you see a palette and you think, oh, I've got all those shades except for that one and I really want just that one shade and the number of times I've bought a palette for one or two shades because I just can't get them elsewhere as singles unless it's going to cost, you know, unless you go to America because there seem to be a lot more companies selling singles in America um, than there is over here in the UK. We're still catching up with that a little bit. Um, and then by the time you had postage and import tax and everything, blah, 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 it would have worked out more expensive than buying the whole palette that I wanted for just two shades. So anytime I find a UK indie that's selling individual shadows, I'll normally shoot on, buy a few, see what they're like. So I've got a mixture here. The lemon, mint, teal, this one reminds me so much of Born Fresco by ABH. I had to get it. Uh, olive and orange are all mattes. The yellow gold is a satiny shimmer. The silver, the pink and the kind of bluey purple uh, are all shimmers. Uh, quite glittery looking shimmers but not press glitters. So, I thought that was a nice rounded selection of colours that I I uh, seem to be loving right now. This is still a teaching channel. Because of that I go at a speed that everyone can keep up with. I also zoom right in close 
so that people whose eyesight's not that good and are watching me on a mobile can really see what's going on. This does mean sometimes when I look down you get to see my hairline, sorry about that, but it's, it's a trade-off between you occasionally seeing my widow's peak in close-up and people being able to see what's actually going on. So, yay. Um, I'm going to insert a clip just now, in a minute, that's very much just now, I'll be there just now in a minute. Uh, I'm going to insert a clip uh, in a minute, which will talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. There is a difference. The way that eyeshadow wears on them through the day is very similar, which is why so many people with deep set lids think they have hooded lids when they don't. So I'm going to talk you through the difference because the way you need to apply your makeup is slightly different when you have deep set eyes compared to hooded lids. All right, your clip is imminent. I will see you at the other end of it, hopefully applying some coloured pigments to my eyes. Well, eyelids. <laughs> Here's that clip I've been talking about. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's, it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away 
out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back again. Okay, uh, I'm going to start off with a floofy brush. It is clean, it's just stained, I've cleaned it on a dry washcloth. But Sunday evening is my uh, brush washing time and it's not quite Sunday evening yet. So I'm going to start off with this shade that looks like Born Fresco, which is called Rosso, R O S S O. Okay, not too much kick up in the pan, that's good. And picks up a fair amount on the brush. Let me just zoom you out fractionally. I think I've got this slightly too close. That's a little bit better, isn't it? You were a little bit too up close and personal then. <laughs> right, I'm going to do the uh, Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do that is because I'm 46 and I've lost over 12 stone, which is over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. So if I do the windscreen wiper, I get tiger stripes or like barcode striping where the eyes folded over on itself. But I know 20 year olds who've always been slim that have similar issues. So I just find the Viennese Waltz is the smoothest way to apply a pigment or a shadow to your lid without pulling the lid around too much and without getting those telltale gaps. Now I always hold the brush right at the end put as little pressure on the lid as possible. I normally, if it's a normal length brush, put the end of the brush against the palm of my hand, which also helps with steadying it. If you're using travel size brushes, that's not always appropriate because then you'd be right off the end of the brush. So, start at this end because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to tidy up over here where your nose isn't in the way. I'm going to start kind of midway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just going to start with applying this. I actually um, passed my modern renaissance on to a friend of mine, Hedda, the lady who sent me all the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks and um, I'd already gone through it. When I first started getting into makeup. I didn't have anywhere near as many palettes as I've got now. And I actually panned about six shades in, in Modern Renaissance. So it was on offer one Christmas so I decided to treat myself and get a new one. And passed the one that I panned on to a different friend of mine that was just starting to get into makeup, wasn't really sure if she was interested or not, so I thought, you know. This is building up really nicely. Um, my favourite shade in Modern Renaissance is Born Fresco. It was the one that I panned first, that was what I was using as my um, crease shade, regardless of what look I went for. I was always going for Born Fresco. Uh, I actually bought 
one fresco as a single from Anastasia after I'd passed on the modern renaissance palette because I thought I'm really not, I'm only reaching for sort of Braun Fresco um, and Cypress Umber and I'd got a dupe for Cypress Umber in quite a few different palettes and singles and I thought right the only one I'm really, I, I kept trying to find dupes for Braun Fresco and it was really difficult to find because it's a mauve but it's got a grey undertone to it and two, you know, I'd pick up what I thought was going to be a dupe for it and it was way too pink. I mean this has got quite a pink undertone but it has got an element of the grey that I like in Braun Fresco. So I'm really, really happy with this so far. And as you can see that has blended on super smoothly. Right, I'm going to clean this brush off just on the clean washcloth again. I don't like using colour switches, they're far too harsh on the bristles of your brush. Uh, I used to use them a lot, in, in my old films you'll see me using them, uh, less so now, if ever. In fact it would only be an absolute last result that I would use it. Now, which of those two shades is the deeper? Hmm. Trying to decide which colour route to go down. I knew I was going to use this one. It was, it was always going to happen. Um, I think I'm going to go into the olivey green, which they call kiwi. Actually, it is the colour of a kiwi fruit, looking at it in the camera. But in real life, to me, um, I don't know. It is, it's kind of halfway between a kiwi fruit and a, a green olive. So, I shall go in with that again on this floofy brush. Again, not a major amount of kick up. I've just tapped back off into the pan there. You can see there's not a huge amount of kick up at all. What is there I shall pick back up as I'm building shades up. And I shall take this just a little further down the crease, or further down the eye towards the crease, and just repeat my earlier motion. Had a uh, an interesting comment on one of my more recent films from someone moaning that I always do the same look and that it's boring really despite the fact I use many different colours I do all kinds of looks I do this one where I blend sort of two or three colours up the lid and then put shimmer on the lid. I do cut creases, I do halo eyes. Um, a couple of times I've done editorial looks but then I get people moaning that I didn't blend it well enough. And this person was moaning that I'm boring and I'm just like if you're finding me that boring why are you watching me? I was just sitting there giggling to myself like why would you watch something that you find boring? You know if I find a channel boring I'm like ugh next. It's like I never have understood the hate watching that goes on. This is taking a little bit more work to build up but I do struggle sometimes here on both sides because um, I get very very dry patches just there. I mean, in, in real life this is not looking patchy but on camera it is. Um, and you'll hear that from a lot of people. I know um, the collab that I did with uh, Chelsea, the one, wearing a, the one wearing a palette collab we did recently. 
she was saying that when she was applying, I think it was a green to her eye as well, um, she was saying, you know, in real life this is not patchy, but in my um, camera it's looking patchy. And you can get that because, I mean, I'm filming with a high def camera. So, uh, it does see more than the natural eye does. So, you know, maybe if I did get a microscope onto my eye, it would be looking patchy. But, for the overall effect, when I look in the mirror, it's not patchy. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm not on TV, I'm not appearing on a high def. Well, unless you're streaming me to your TV, of course, in which case, oh my goodness, ignore the wrinkles. I'm 46, I've earned every single one of them. Um, you know, most of the time, people are just going to see me as me. You know, they're not going to see me on a TV, so... Providing it doesn't look patchy in real life, that's all I'm really worried about. Yeah, see, again, I'm struggling to build that. I might try a different brush, because sometimes some colours do need a more dense brush to build the colour up, and this is a very floofy brush. So I'm going to go in with a more densely packed brush, just to see if that helps with building the colour density a bit. Or whether it is just, I mean, it could be my eyes to be fair. You know, we have had a change in weather which does affect my skin, but the fact it's doing it on both eyes makes me wonder if it is the shade itself. If you do have this issue, what you can do, once you're happy with the blend, pop some pigment onto the brush and just tap it where you have the patchiness and you can actually build the colour up that way. I'm going to put another colour through the crease, so I'm not too worried at the moment. And I can always do some artistic graphic liner if it doesn't go the way I want it to. But that's built up a little bit better, you can see the colour much truer now. So I think this particular shade is going to need a more dense brush. to get the best effect with it. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to continue with this smaller brush because I'm going to do into my crease now. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you need to um, follow where you've moved your crease to rather than your actual crease. So I'm going to go in with this deeper teal which is called River. So one benefit of not having my acrylic nails on anymore I can actually pick these things up without feeling like I'm going to stab them. It's weird, I'd gone like 11 years of having acrylic tips on and then within a few months of the lockdown and not being able to have them on, I'm like, mm, whatever, I'm not really fussed about getting them back now. Just dust some of that excess away. And then with this I'm going to go 
really quite tight, really small circular movements. I'm only going to go just over halfway along the crease with this because I really just want to deepen up the outer edge there because anything darker looks further away anything lighter looks closer to you so if you are creating a new crease that's why it's always best to pop a deeper colour through that crease even if it is just as we're doing here the outer edge of it because it just helps to sort of add to the illusion that your crease is somewhere that it's not so how's your day been? has it been a good one? I hope it has if it hasn't been a good one well then my lovely I hope tomorrow is a better one for you and if you're at the start of your day I hope it is as fabulous as you are because let's face it Apart from the old keyboard warrior, who hate watches, we are the nicest family on YouTube. I'm lucky in that respect, I don't get too many, um, you know, really rude comments. I've been getting some recently about zooming in this close. Which is why I make a point of mentioning it at the start of each film as to why I do that. Because I have so many people say to me, thank you for coming in this close, yours is the only tutorials that I can actually see what you're doing. Bit of fallout from this one, but I think that's, that's me with the angle that I'm holding the brush at. But uh, it's not an issue because I always do my eyes first and then my base afterwards now. This is really quite nice. It's blending really nicely with that green. Clean the brush off. Again, dust some of the fall out away. Like I said, I think that was really my fault. Right, got my flat brush here for applying shimmers. Uh, never go into a pressed pigment or eyeshadow with a wet brush. But I always wet the brush after I've applied it. I'm using this today. Makeup Obsession Fit Fix. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Uh, you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just save an empty spray bottle and put fresh water in it each time you sit down to do your makeup. Right. So. Four shimmers to choose from. <laughs> okay, I don't think the pink's gonna work. Let's take that away. Hmm. So tempted by that purple. I don't think the crease colour's quite deep enough for it. I'm going to start with the silver, which is called Orion. Oh, one of my mates called her son that. It's also the name of a guy from 
the late 70s and early 80s that people thought might have been Elvis Presley. It sounded like him, it looked like him. I think it was just an impersonator that was uh, telling a good shtick. Okay, this shimmer is really soft. It's a little difficult to pick up on the brush without massacring it, but you can get it on there, so that's good. I wet the brush regardless of brand. Uh, it just helps prevent some fallout and usually helps boost the shimmer up a bit. Right, your ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into the crease of my knuckles and spin it to dry it. Because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue, because then you won't have a brush. You'll have a stick. What I like about these small brushes like this, I hold it up against my dark hair, you can probably see better, is you can get right into the corners. without much trouble even when you've got deep set eyes I like myself okay this is stunning this has got I don't know if it's being picked up on camera but it's got it's not just silver there's like blue and green and almost like gold reflex in it just dry the brush off, pick up a bit more pigment. This is stunning. It's not quite holographic because it's not picking up all of the colours of the rainbow. But it's definitely multi-chrome. Oh wow, that's stunning. Dry the brush, and I'm going to go and do this shade on the other eye. Now, with my left eye, because I'm blind in it, it was pulled around an awful lot when I was you know, five, six years old at the ophthalmic hospital. Because of that, I've got super deep creasing. And because of the super deep creasing, I have to actually stretch my lid out when I'm applying anything onto the actual mobile lid. These creases here. Because if I don't, what happens is the pigment just settles loosely into those creases instead of being um, properly blended onto the lid. And then as they dry through the day, they flake into my eye and down my face and it's uncomfortable and it doesn't look very good either but you can see I, I don't pull the lid out any further than I have to and as soon as I've done the bit where it's creased I let go you can see there's a lot more mobility to this lid than there was this one and again, that unfortunately is because of how it was pulled around. Do you know what? I think I am going to put some of that purple on. This is called Galaxy. There's a flying thing in here, great. Hate this time of year when you get all the midges and things. It's time for you to die. It's autumn. Go away. Leave us alone. Okay. I'm just going to pop this. of the silver 
and gently kind of blend it into that turquoise that I put on the outer edge and blend the two shimmers together so there's a nice gradient as you go across Lush. That is so pretty. I'm glad I put that deeper shade on there as well. I'm really impressed with how these are performing, actually. I can see why uh, Ari likes them as much as he does. They do actually have the option on their website. You can design your own um, palette. You get to design the packaging and everything. Um, which I was tempted to do, but the whole point of getting single shadows is that you can then mix and match them and create other deep palettes, or at least that's what I get them for. Right, my beauties, I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and stuff on, uh, and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now for me there's going to be a fair amount of delay but for you after this wibbly bit it will be instant. Ready for the wibble? Alright I am uh, back. Uh, I did my usual soap brows and I used the uh, kiwi shade on my brows. Okay, right. Flat topped brush. I'm going to go into the river shade, which is the teal or the deep teal. And I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line. I'm just so pleased that I finally managed to find some pencils that will actually go in my waterline and not irritate the ever loving shit out of my eyes. Because it used to be a case of if I put anything in my waterline, my eyes would start streaming so much. I'd maybe get half a dozen photos of the look and then my mascara would start running and the look would start smudging and you know, the, the foundation, if I was wearing one, would have streaks in it. It was just, it was a hot mess. Um, so far, I have managed to find that the BH Cosmetics Power Pencil. Go back where I put you. There we go. The LA Girl Shockwave Neons. And to a certain extent, although it's not as long wearing, the Barry M High Viz pencils all actually work in my waterline, which is bloody awesome. Right, flat top brush. This is the brush from the Graveyard Girl palette. She did with Tarte years ago. Flat top, but chunky, but you can use absolutely any um, smudger brush, fluffy brush, etc. I'm going to go in with this, which is Frosted Mint. It's actually, oh, actually, it's got a satin sheen to it. I hadn't realised that. Hmm. 
then I'm going to use that just to soften the lower lash line. I really like this. I'm really, really liking these shades. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now this purchase that I made is absolutely Soraya's fault. She's a 90s love child on YouTube. She was talking through her favourite highlighters and she got to Smashbox. And obviously she spoke about the Vlada one, which was the rose packaging. And then she mentioned this one, which I'd completely forgotten about. It's the Hood Witch. Look at the beauteous. That is, actually it kind of matches the eye look that I've done. Look at that. Uh, this is in shade Opti Mystic and it's white based but with a pink shift. So I thought I might try this today. If it turns out to be too dark, I should just use it as a blush topper. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought years and years ago from eBay. We'll run a little bit of that up under the tail of my brow. Just makes your brow look a little bit more raised, a bit more youthful. Apparently gravity hits our brows as well as everything else, folks, as we get older. Isn't that great? Droopy brows to go with droopy anything else. Sure, this is quite bright enough for what I want from in the corner. Now, let's grab, let's grab the Fenty Beauty. How many carrots? I've got a little mini one. This doesn't actually have a base pigment. It's just full on glitter basically but as I've already put the Smashbox one on I can pop this Fenty over the top and just add a bit of cha 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 you one last time. I'm going to lob some of this onto my cheekbones, uh, do something with my hair, stick some mascara on, choose a lippy and I'll be back with my finished look and final first impression thoughts. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I am back. We really are nearly losing the light now. Uh, the mascara that I used is the L'Oreal uh, Very Different Unlimited Mascara Waterproof. One way you can sort of tilt the angle of that. I actually find it easier to use it as a normal straight brushed one. When I first got that, I wasn't overly impressed. It was too wet. Um, I used it three or four times and then I left it a couple of months and it's now started to dry up a little bit. It's not dry, it's now the sort of liquidity or viscosity that I like in my mascara. Uh, the Lippy, 
I got a little mini, look at this. Uh, this is Urban Decay and it is Manic, one of their cream lippies. But we are talking Butonomy. So I used one, two, three, four, five, six of these ten shades that I bought today. Uh, so far I'm really impressed. That green did take a bit of working with but I need to use that again and find out whether it is just that my eyes are a little bit dry at the moment because when I put it through my brows no problem at all. Uh, so I need to double check with that one before I definitely say it's patchy. Um, but even though it was looking patchy in my viewfinder, it wasn't looking patchy in my mirror. And I could, you know, pat to build the uh, density of colour up anyway. So that wasn't too much of an issue. Uh, I really, really love that first shade, their Born Fresco Dupe. Was it Rosso? Was it Rosso? Yeah, Rosso. Woohoo! Check me out. Clearly, my fibro brain is uh, behaving itself at the moment. I really, really like that. Um, it's it's not Born Fresco. It's not quite got enough grey undertone. But it's close enough once you've blended other colours on top of it that for me I can use that so I, I don't have to use up my expensive Anastasia one too quickly, which is awesome. Um, so far I'm really impressed. Those glittery shades are just stunning. Um, I really, really do like them. So, Ari, thank you for using them on your channel so that I found out about them. Um, I will absolutely be getting some more of those and building up my Butonomy collection. Uh, because I, I really enjoyed using those. Um, I want to do a, a warm look with the orange and the yellows. So I'll do that. If I don't do it on camera, I'll do it off camera and just stick some pictures up on Instagram. So just keep an eye on, on that and you'll be able to see if my thoughts change. Um, foundation's a little bit white and spiteful at the moment. But it's this Uoma um, foundation. I've got White Pearl T1N. Um, I have worn it once before and it did oxidise about half a shade deeper over about the first hour of wear. Um, but as I said at the moment with the lighting the way it is, I think this could be a little bit of flashback. I don't know if this has got um, any zinc oxide or you know other sunscreen type ingredients in it I'll have to have a look a bit closer a bit later on um, it's got micro algae extract so it could be that reflecting back because I know some micro algaes do really reflect brightly and Again, looking in my mirror, the effect isn't quite as drastic a difference from my neck. So I think this does have a bit of flashback, so that's actually quite useful to see. Um, oh, if you want me to do a foundation wear test film with this, let me know. Um, the other new foundations that I've got... Um, she said knocking everything for a Burton. I've got the Koki HD Skin Perfect Foundation. 
and I've got the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. So if you want me to do a wear test with any of those three, because those are my three newest foundations, let me know. Uh, the other foundations that I've used quite a few times now but haven't done wear tests on, um, I've got the Zoeva uh, Authentic Skin. Uh, I've got the Tarte uh, Found Sealer and I have got the Pure 4-in-1 Selfie. So that's, the, that's my six most recent foundations. If you want to see a wear test with any of them, just let me know in the comments. Right. If you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. Um, they also knocked all of my notifications back to personalised from uh, being all. And at the moment, for some reason, they don't seem to be sending emails. So hopefully that will change. So just double check that your notifications are still on and that they are all set to all. Do that with all of the uh, creators that you follow, not just me because uh, it knocked all of mine back. I had to spend a good afternoon going through and putting them all back on again. Uh, if you're new here and you've stumbled over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, listening to me waffle on at you in what I'm told is quite a comforting and soothing voice. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. As I said, apart from the old keyboard warrior, we are the nicest family in YouTube or on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You just hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. Well done, you've remembered how to click. Like I said, ring the bell, put the notifications on, select all. YouTube to stop sending emails without telling anybody. Perhaps they'll restart sending them without telling anybody. In the meantime, if you're looking for a bit of me time, I do have an awful lot of other films you can watch. I've got everything's in playlists, so have a look through the playlist, see what takes you fancy. I've got tutorials, I've got product reviews. Um, I've got challenges, collabs, um, tags, I even read you my favourite poem. So basically, as I've said for some considerable time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge, baby. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is your stay fabulous? And I will see you next time. Bye for now.